Hello, Helen Brahms here coming to you live from Mesa in Arizona. Hope you're all having a super fantastic sparkling start to your fun Friday and your finish it Friday. Yes, we have two things on today. So um, what are we up to today? Well, we're going to complete module two today on our genealogy. Um, that's my task for today. Um, I also have an interview that I'm doing later on today. I am actually being interviewed. So um, that's... 3.30 Pacific. I've got to remember the time zones. 3.30 Pacific. Um, and of course it's Fun Friday, so we always look for fun things to do on Friday, but we also have Finish It Friday too. So um, let's get those projects finished, get that to-do list crossed out done for the week. Um, oh, hang on. So I had a dog here. Sorry. <laughs> My apologies. Didn't mean to do that live, but... Um, when you get a dog here in your mouth, it's a like you've got to get that out. Um, what was that? Oh yeah, so finish it Friday is making sure that to-do list is done, your projects are done for the week, um, so that you can start the weekend fresh and be ready for the for the coming week. So um, one of the things I did this morning, part of Fun Friday, <laughs> well, yeah, it was fun because it's genealogy related, so it's just got to be fun. So I was actually looking for um, looking on Amazon just a few minutes ago for a reference book. Um, just wanted to check out the pricing and all of that and see if it's something that I actually need. Um, thank goodness that you have Kindle where you can actually download like the first chapter and that sort of stuff too. So um, that was pretty cool. But something that came up and I thought, oh, this will be interesting is um, when I scrolled down to read the information about the book, they also had a, you know, where they put um, other products or related products or something like that. And they have that bar across the front. They had genealogy t-shirts in there. And I thought, oh, this is going to be fun. I've got to go check these out. So <laughs> they had things like, um, you know, badass genealogist. I thought I could wear that one. Yep. Um, stay up late, frequent, uh, sorry, stay up late, frequent graveyards, search for dead relatives, irritate living relatives. Yes, I do genealogy. Um, another one had written on it, family genealogist. I know which branch the nuts came from. Um, Another one said, that's what I do. I research family histories. I know things. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, this this is probably has to be one of my favorite ones. Genealogists, we do precision guesswork based on unreliable data provided by those of questionable knowledge. And when you think of it, and I suddenly thought, I thought, you know, there is some truth to that because based on the source that you get the information from, how reliable is that source? Um, if you're on a site like... Um, my heritage or ancestry um, places like that where you can upload your genealogy and you can go researching for records online those are sites that can be used by a lot of amateur genealogists and um, you know hobbyists and some of them will turn around and go oh yes that's my ancestor but they don't follow the specifications to verify that that is actually their ancestor you know um, was that person in the same area that you know your ancestor was in because when you start with what you know and you work backwards and um, people are some people are like oh I'm related to and they'll name some famous person and now they're setting out to prove that and they may start with that famous person and then work down you've got to start with what you know and work backwards but yes you can start with the famous person and work down and see if there is a connection but some people will try to manipulate data to see if they get a connection and like the tree I was researching last week um, there was a lot of times where I was sort of like, yeah, this ain't correct. Because there was a lot of those little green leaves that come up on Ancestry and you're going through the hints. And this, and, um, this person's grandfather, there were two of them with the same name, with the same first name, the same middle initial, and the same last name, born around the same time. Both of them had the same name for their father. Their mother's names were different. Their mother's name was different. But both of these um, grandfathers married different women. Fortunately, the girl knew her, the names of her grandparents. And so that was very easy. I was able to quickly say, okay, this is the right one compared to this one. So I could ignore any relationship, anything doing with this one over here. And But when I was looking at census reports, it's like, okay, is this the grandmother or is this the, but I, is this the right grandfather and all that sort of thing. Because um, the grandfather and the grandmother did separate. So it's sort of like, okay, now which one am I following? Oh, as far as the grandfather goes, do I have the correct, um, do I have the correct um, obituary? Do I? And so it was looking through, and it's really you got to get down to those minute details, and uh, and find out things, and then finding out um, 
you know, if, for example, I came across a McCoy connect, connection and it's all like, okay, are they part of Hatfield and Connoy? And McCoy, are they part of the Hatfield McCoy feud? And so I had a look, what area were they in? Um, and this is, I'm still researching it. I could very easily say, yes, they're connected to the McCoys. No, you have to do the research. So I'm currently researching. Yes, they were all in the same area of Kentucky at the same time. So there is a possibility that they could be related. If they're not related, then they may know each other. But um, seeing as families didn't migrate a lot during that time, um, well, actually, no, some of them actually did because you've got all the pioneers and stuff. But because that, that name is in that area, there is a lot high likelihood that they could be connected. But you've got to take it step by step by step, one step at a time. And the um, if you go to the site for the um, board, certification, uh, board certified genealogists, they actually have um, the mark the um, the list there of what you need to do to prove each fact. There's um, and I'm still trying, I'm still memorizing these, so don't ask me to quote them because I don't know. But I'll have them for you later today. Um, so there's you know you got to you got to verify the source at least three times. And there's different steps in that that you have to that you have to follow in order to verify the information. So when I saw that one that said, um, genealogists, we do precision guesswork based on unreliable data provided by those of questionable knowledge. We have to go look at the source. Where is the source coming from? Is it an original document? Then yes, it's pretty reliable. But then again, who wrote on the document? And um, one thing I learned um, on one episode of Genealogy Roadshow was this woman wanted to know why. Did, what did her family name change when they at Alice Island when they came to the thing? And the thing of Alice Island changing the names is a complete myth. They actually had people um, staffing Alice Island who were from those regions where the immigrants were coming in from. So they were able to um, help fill out the documents. They were um, they were able to help them fill out their names. Now the immigrants themselves may have decided they wanted to Anglicize. Anglicize their names, make them more English, um, or they wanted to change the spelling of their name or whatever. But they had um, immigration workers that would work with them who were from their region or from their countries so that they could actually um, um, talk with them, one, in their own language, and two, get the spellings down correctly. So um, if a name got changed at Alice Island, it was. Um, it was the immigrant themselves that changed the name as they came in. So it was very interesting to learn that. And when people say, oh, my family's name got changed, da, da, da. and this one woman was like, you know, I want to know where this name came from. Why did they change? Did they get changed to Alice Island? And, and I'm like sitting there and I'm looking at all these records that they're showing, like the shipping manifest with the passenger list on, very good source, um, other documents and all that. And the name is the same all the way through. So it never got changed. And that's how I learned about um, Alice Island did not change the names unless the immigrant themselves changed it when they came in. Um, but they had their like the immigration papers and everything else um, along with their, their passports or their traveling documents. Um, so if you can find those resources, they're actually, you know, they're a good source. So it's learning as a genealogist, we've got to look at the source of where is this information coming from? Is it a primary source document? And I talked about that last night. And the primary source document are those first account documents. So church parish records, great example of a thing because when somebody's being baptized, they get written in the parish records. Um, if somebody's getting married, it's written in the parish records. So those are primary source documents. Um, but then again, it's also, you still got to go through the checks and balances. Yes, it may, it's a primary source. Yes, the relevant information is reliable, but is it the right person? Because you could have several people within that region that all had the same name. And I come across this all the time in my own family tree um, because I thought, hey, my maiden name, which is Eakins, I thought, well, that's not a very common name. It's almost as common as Smith in England. I had to go through 181, 183 John Eakins to find that were born in a five-year period because I knew him, my third, third or fourth great-grandfather. Fourth great-grandfather was born around the time that he was born, around the area he was born, there was over 183 John Eakins that were born within a five-year period, all in that region, and I had to go through and find the exact, and it took me years to find the exact one that fitted in that tree. Um, so you've, you've, genealogy is not a quick thing. It does take time, and you have to be as precise as you possibly can. And um, so it's just one of those things. 
but the ultimate t-shirt saying that I really liked and I thought about this I thought yeah this this t-shirt is definitely me genealogy the ultimate puzzle and those of you who know me know how much I love puzzles I love mysteries I love um, anything that's I love logic puzzles crossword puzzles jigsaw puzzles and to me genealogy is one giant humongous genealogy puzzle uh, jigsaw puzzle because there's a little piece here a little piece here and you're putting all that information together to make the tree but it is the ultimate puzzle because you will never ever finish it you will never finish the tree um, there's always people being added there's always people um, you know births there's always people being added when people die you've got to go in and update the record so it's one of those things that's, that's constantly evolving um, as you go and the more you go back the harder the records get to find and then you've got to look at what was happening at that time. Was there a fire or an earthquake or something like that that may have destroyed original records as well? Um, so what other sources can you go to for information and things? So um, genealogy really is the ultimate puzzle. I mean, there's, there's those 40, 50, 60,000 jigsaw piece jigsaw puzzles out there. I would absolutely love to attempt one of those in a year. <laughs> First, I need the space to do it because those things are massive. We're talking feet in length and width not inches um, so I'd love to actually tackle one of those one time if I had the space to do it um, but to me genealogy is the ultimate jigsaw puzzle it's one that will never ever get completed yes you can finish a 60 60,000 piece jigsaw puzzle it may take you several months to do it um, but genealogy when you're researching family trees you will never ever ever complete it um, there's just no way you've got missing records there's events that happen where records get destroyed. Um, there's um, areas where the family history was passed down orally. So there's actually no written record of it. It's an oral passing down of information. There's um, places where they didn't know how to read and write. So that's where the oral thing comes in. Or other ones where they've done the pictograms. Um, and some uh, some family history are done with the, with the um, pictograms. No, it's the ones with the drawings on the caves, um, the carvings, that sort of stuff. Um, so genealogy is a puzzle that will never ever be completed, which is why it's the ultimate puzzle. And I just absolutely love it. I want to get as much done on it as I can in my lifetime and get and help people make those connections with their family, with their past, so that they know where they came from. They can um, have a connection to their past. But if you want to hear more about that, tune into this afternoon at 3.30 um, p.m. Pacific because um, I'm actually getting interviewed about my genealogy, um, my genealogy work and why I love it so much. And it's because it's the ultimate puzzle. And uh, I just love digging around family trees and helping people make connections to their past. So for me, that's fun. So for this fun Friday, I found some really cool genealogy quotes on t-shirts, which was unexpected, but made me laugh. <laughs> but then also got me thinking at the same time. And I get to talk genealogy this afternoon in an interview. And I get to work on module two of my um, of my class, of my certification that I'm doing. And um, so that's basically, excuse me, all that's on my plate. Oh, I also have homework for my mastermind group for tomorrow, which I have to complete today before tomorrow as well. So I'm going to have to be time managing a lot today because I've got I want to work get module two done I've got the homework to do for my mastermind class for tomorrow um, which we were assigned last night so it's not a last minute thing we were assigned it last night and um, and I have an interview this afternoon so it's going to be a very full day um, it's going to be a well, super fantastic and sparkling I mean it just is it, every day is but um, it's going to be an incredible day today and uh, so Go out, have fun today, get that stuff finished that you need to get finished for the week so you can have a nice clean weekend as far as projects go. So when you come back in on month, when you do your weekly planning, you're not going, oh, I totally forgot I had to do this last week or I didn't get this done last week and I've got to do it this week. And those ones, that, those tasks that you pass from week to week to week and you never get them done, why are they on the list? If it's something you have to do and you keep putting it off, either do it or ditch it. Hmm good one do it or ditch it so take that look at your task which is one that gets carried from week to week to week to week and you never do anything make the decision today to either do it or ditch it so simple uh, you know do it or ditch it if you're going to do it just go do it if you're not if you're going to put it off till next week ditch it it's out of there 
you're done. Um, you may circle back around a week, a month, a year later when you're more mentally prepared to do it. But for now, if you're not in that space to do something and it's not an urgent thing, it's just one of those little back burner things, either do it or ditch it. Have a super fantastic sparkling day and we'll catch you guys um, later on today and uh, we'll have some more genealogy talk. Yay, cool, awesome. Okay, bye. Have, um, sorry, I think <laughs> the dog said something. <laughs> Making a noise, she just wandered on. She just quietly, she does this scary thing. You know how you see the, some of those shorts in the horror movies where the doll just moves? And you're like, Zephy's like that. You don't, her tags don't rattle a lot of the time. And so you look down and she'll be sitting there and you look down again and she'll be sitting a little closer and I'm just like, it's kind of scary. But anyway, have a super fantastic sparkling finish up Friday and fun Friday and we'll catch you guys later today. Hey, konera.